In the writing and development process, what kinds of questions were you asking yourself about the story, about the characters? Um, in my writing process, I actually I have a weird process. I read this book uh, called The Mind of the Maker by Dorothy L. Sayers, and it's a fascinating book. I recommend it to anybody in the creative field. Um, she wrote it in the 19, uh, 1941, it came out. Um, and she was a mystery writer, but she wrote this one. It was about, she was trying to write a book of theology, but in trying to explain the mind of, of a god, she uses artists and writers as an example. And it's a, one of the things I loved about it is she said that as a creator, you create the world, you create the physics of it and the laws of it, and you create the people that inhabit it, but then you give them free will. <laughs> And to me, that is the most organic form of writing. And so my writing process is I try, to, I try to just see the world and try to understand it and know who my characters are and the premise. And then I literally just, I ferment on that for a while until I feel like I have an understanding. I'll write notes and stuff like that. And then I literally just sit down and write. And just when it comes to a plot point, like what would they do here? What would they do here? and letting the character I've conjured in my mind have that free will to make those choices instead of me guiding them. And the only time I fin feel like I hit a writer's block now is when I'm trying to force them to do something they wouldn't do. <laughs> um, and so that is kind of my writing process. And then once I have a first draft out, that's when I then go back and start asking myself those questions like, okay, here's some of the themes I wanted to address that maybe aren't as clear or aren't in it. How do I put that into it? How do I, is there a where, place where this works? Is there a place where this works? Um, and so I have a kind of a weird writing style I developed after reading that book. And it was, to me it was a lifesaver because that's why Frey ended up being the film it is, was I completely, after reading that I changed my whole creative style and writing style based on what I'd read in there. And uh, um, it obviously worked with Frey. <laughs> Uh, so I decided to keep doing it that way and um, you know I think that's part of why Blood from Stone is so different as well is I don't set up a structure, I don't set up markers, I don't have any plot points I write down. It's like here's the world, here's the characters, let's see where we go. And I actually like the process now. Um, I can like Frey I wrote in about three weeks beginning to end and the first draft and the final draft there's a lot of editing, a lot of refining, but as a whole, they're very similar. And same with Blood from Stone. Uh, if you look at the first draft and the final draft, other than chopping a lot of pages off of it, it's a very similar story. Uh, so for better or for worse, the writing style that works for me, we'll see what audiences feel. <laughs> um, but I enjoy it. It comes out much more organically. I don't get writer's block. Um, it just takes a lot longer to write that first page because you're trying to figure out all the aspects of the world that they're in, all the people that are there. But once you have that all, just kind of let them loose in your brain and see what happens. That's how I do it, at least. How did you find that book, or how did the book find you, it sounds like? That sounds like a very magical book. I haven't oh, actually is. heard of it. It's Yeah, it's, I found it. I One of my obsessions is I collect old books, uh, not like collectible old books, I only have a few of those. Um, but just, I love going into antique stores, thrift stores, old bookstores, and digging through for just ones that sound interesting. And I'm obsessed with reading about psychology, I'm obsessed with reading about religion and theology, um, I'm obsessed with reading about other cultures um, and uh, anthropology and all that sort of stuff. And I just I was going through one of those sections and there was a book called The Mind of the Maker. I'm like, well, that sounds fascinating. And I read just the first two pages of her, uh, of Dorothy's uh, introduction, and I was laughing. Like, it is hilarious. She, the first two pages of it are just brilliant. And it goes on. I mean, throughout it, she's actually funny. She has an entire chapter. I really feel like it was devoted to just trashing another author she hated. Um, every time she is using examples of creative blasphemy. She references his work and just trashes him. <laughs> She's absolutely hilarious in the book. It's a really thoughtful book, a really heavy book. It's also a motivating one because she wrote it during World War II and twice in the book she briefly references 
getting back to writing after a bombing raid. And I think back to that whenever I've had a bad day and I just don't feel like being creative, I'm like, she wrote one of my favorite books while being bombed by Nazis. I can get over my bad day and write. <laughs> so it's just all around, I highly recommend that book if you can track it down.